So you guys might have heard in the news that electric vehicles have a tendency to catch fire and explode. Firefighters attacking a fire that began when a car crashed into a garage, sparking a blaze that also ignited the house. That electric vehicle not only burned for hours, but once the fire was out, it reignited on the tow truck. So this is a legit concern. It's something that does happen. And in this video, I want to take a deeper dive into this, see what causes EVs to catch fire and just how likely this event really is. And then once we have that data, I want to compare EVs against gas cars to see their exact benefits and whether or not that is worth the additional fire risk. And as always, if you guys enjoyed the video, I always appreciate the like, subscribing, it really does help out the channel quite a bit. Okay, so the first distinction here when it comes to EVs catching fire is to identify the source, and that is, of course, the battery. And technically, anything with a lithium iron battery can suffer from this exploding fire problem, including things like your phone and laptop. The only difference with an EV is that the battery is bigger so when something goes wrong it's more devastating but as we know batteries are usually very stable so what exactly is causing these events to happen well the phenomenon that causes batteries to catch fire is known as thermal runaway this is when the temperature inside of a battery cell continues to rise via a chemical reaction and it cannot easily be stopped ultimately it gets so hot that it damages the other cells around it and it catches fire it explodes and it's not a pretty situation. That's why even for professional firefighters, it is extremely difficult to extinguish a battery fire. And I just remember some of our firefighters standing there shooting so much water at that electric vehicle and then not going out. But as you know from your other battery powered devices, this is an extremely rare event. So what exactly can cause this to initiate? So damaging the battery is essentially what can cause this to happen. And there's multiple ways to damage a battery. Uh, the first one is physically. So an example of this would be in a car crash. If the battery is impacted or pierced, that could easily cause thermal runaway to initiate. Another way is actually temperature. So lithium ion batteries can be damaged if exposed to extreme cold or extreme heat. And oddly enough, these batteries prefer a similar temperature range to humans. So anything below freezing isn't ideal and anything above 90 degrees Fahrenheit is also not great. Another big no-no is using the wrong charger. So for example, if you try and fast charge a battery that doesn't have that capability, or if you have the wrong voltage charger, that can easily damage a battery. And the last major point here is simply defects. So if you get a defective battery straight out of the factory, that could cause problems. So all of these pathways can damage a battery, which then can cause a short circuit within one of the cells, which then leads to a thermal runaway reaction and a fire. And that's when you get images like this on the news of these very intense chemical battery fires that nobody wants to deal with. Now, the next crucial piece of data is exactly how common are these life-threatening events? And this article presents data on that very topic. So it says here, a better way of looking at electric vehicle fires is to compare the number of fires per 100,000 vehicles sold. Researchers from the insurance deal site Auto Insurance EZ compiled sales and accident data from the Bureau of Transportation Statistics and National Transportation Safety Board. The site found that hybrid vehicles had the most fires per 100,000 sales at 3,000 474. There was 1,529 fires per 100,000 gas vehicles sold and just 25.1 fires per 100,000 electric vehicles. So this data proves to me that yes, fires are very dangerous, especially chemical fires, but the likelihood of it happening is extremely rare and regular gas cars tend to catch fire more often. So that's a big safety difference between gas and electric vehicles and the decision is ultimately up to you. But of course, there are a lot of other considerations when choosing between gas and electric vehicles, and I wanna to touch on a few of the most important ones right now. So one of my favorite things about EVs is the fact that they can save you a ton of money in maintenance and fuel cost. So this is a visual representation of the components of an electric car versus a gas vehicle. And you're gonna see that EVs are beautifully simple. They have a battery, a motor, and a controller between them. Gas vehicles, on the other hand, are way more complicated with exhaust systems, gas pumps, oil pumps, coolants, the engine, carburetor, smog controls, and of course, a gas tank. And this can be summarized in terms of moving parts. 
So the electric vehicle has one moving part, the motor, whereas a gasoline powered vehicle has hundreds of moving parts. And this results in EVs requiring less periodic maintenance and being more reliable. I found this piece of data that says the annual cost of maintenance for a Model 3 is $190 per year and a Toyota RAV4 has an annual maintenance cost of nearly $1,000. So that's a real benefit, quality of life improvement, that this new technology delivers to the end consumer. But this also extends to fuel cost. So we can see here in this infographic that fuel cost is this green color, and it's potentially the biggest difference between EVs and traditional gas cars. And I actually want to give you guys some hard, tangible numbers on this. So this is data on the average cost per kilowatt hour in the United States. For the longest time, it's been hovering around 14 cents per kilowatt hour, but recently there has been a bit of a spike in cost. The latest data is the cost per kilowatt hour is just over 16 cents. And we can use that data to quickly calculate how much it costs to fully charge something like a Chevy Bolt. So the battery capacity here is 65 kilowatt hours, and all we have to do is multiply that times the rate per kilowatt hour. So that means a full charge zero to 100 is $10.60. Now to be fair, this is the rate for when charging at home, which is the slowest and most cost-effective way to charge an EV. But the public fast chargers do come at a premium and that is usually at around 32 cents per kilowatt hour. So if we do the calculation one more time, that means it's gonna be about double the cost at $20.80 for a complete charge at a fast charger. To give us a point of comparison, a Honda Civic has a gas tank of 12.4 gallons. The current national average cost per gallon is $3.27. So to fully refuel a Honda Civic, that's gonna cost you $40.55, about double the cost of even a more expensive fast charger. And speaking of electricity, one major shade people throw at electric vehicles is that it's no better than gas cars because most of the electricity comes from fossil fuel generation. And I wanna just completely dispel this myth right now. So in terms of national averages, this is the current power grid electricity sources in the US. It is true that about 60% of the generation comes from a split of natural gas and coal, which is a fossil fuel source. And that's why EVs do have indirect emissions, as we can see right here. But when compared to gas cars, which are 100% fossil fuel powered, the emissions are still significantly less. 20% of the electricity powering an EV comes from nuclear, 9% from wind, 6% from hydro, and 4% from solar. But the crucial takeaway here is that an electric vehicle allows you to tap into any energy source. So that means as these ratios change over time and the energy grid becomes more green, your electric vehicle will also become more environmentally friendly. And that simply will never be the case for gas powered vehicles. They can only be powered by gasoline. So there we have it. That's a comprehensive look at EVs versus gas cars, including things like the fire risk. As we saw, EVs do have a specific chemical fire risk that other cars do not have, but we did see from the data that the odds of this actually happening are very low. And when looking at all the other benefits of EVs, like cheaper maintenance costs, cheaper and more environmentally friendly fuel, I think they are by far the best choice in terms of vehicle technology. And maybe that is why they are projected to have such huge market share growth in the next decade. But let me know in the comments below what you think of this topic. If you guys enjoyed, leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you.